Hello and welcome back. I'm Michael providing you with practical data solutions and today we talk about... Give me a second. Alright. SD cards. And more importantly, how to format them on Windows and Mac OS. Let's get started. So, why do we need to format an SD card when most of them can pre-format it when we buy them? Well, reasons could be quite a few. The first one, the first possibility, a damaged or not working SD card. And our first idea would be to format the drive to see if that's going to bring any change. Secondly, we might have compatibility issues. For example, something formatted on Windows, so when you try to run it on Mac OS, might not be recognized, or vice versa. Sometimes we do that because we do experience read and write performance degradation. So if that's the case and if we know that our SD card can do better, definitely a format could be a good idea. Another reason could be data security. If you don't know where this card has been and you're not sure what kind of files could be there or you suspect there could be a virus hiding inside, the easiest thing to do, format it. Probably not on Windows, I think the safest in that sense would be probably picking a device like a camera where the virus can't really spread and doing the format. And last but not least, file size restrictions. Simple example, I'm recording this video in 4K format and the files are usually very large. If I format this under Windows in FAT32, the largest file that could be stored is about 4 gigabytes and um, over here I need bigger. So XFAT could be a good solution. So how do we do that? Well, most of the operating systems of the devices that we use offer an option for formatting the SD card. Even the camera has such a menu. But today we're reviewing how to do that on Windows and Mac OS, starting with the latter one. First, make sure that your SD card is connected. Depending on your Mac model, you might have a dedicated SD card reader or you might need to use an external adapter like this one. When you see it popping up on your desktop, it means that the card is connected. Next, open the disk utility and this can be found under Launchpad other than disk utility or simply search for disk utility in Spotlight, this little magnifying glass in the top right corner. Then locate and select the SD card in Disk Utility from the left sidebar. Then click Erase in the toolbar. And we're going to give our SD card a name. Just pick whatever you like. Then select the format, as we discussed earlier. And in this case, I'm going to use XFAT. Click Erase and the computer is going to do the rest. Once completed, confirm that by clicking the Done button and your card is ready to use. Simply click the Eject button and put it into the device it is designated for. The next thing we're going to do is to learn how to do a format in Windows. And actually here I want to show you two different options. The first method involves Windows Explorer and it's arguably the easiest way of formatting any kind of SD card. Again, the first thing to do is to connect the SD card. Depending on the PC model, could be a built-in reader or we can use an adapter. Then we open Windows Explorer and locate the SD card on your drive list or just wait for a few seconds because the latest editions of Windows automatically run for you external devices. Right-click on the drive and select Format. You should then see the Format window. The type defaults to FAT32, but you may want to change this depending on your needs. Like XFAT. Then enter the desired name of the card in the volume label fields. To finish the process, click the Start button a warning message will appear, which you can accept by clicking OK. It's going to take a few seconds and your card is going to be formatted if you have left the default option for Quick Format. If you don't want to run Quick Format, then you can untick the option. However, keep in mind that for large SD cards, this can take really a long time because the process is going to go through every single sector on the SD card. Ready for me, the two? It's a little bit more complicated, but that's the beauty in these exercises, learning more. Again, make sure your SD card is connected. Right-click on Computer or this PC, then select Management, Disk Management under the Storage section. When the Disk Management section pops up, right-click on the SD card partition and select Format. Then you set your volume label 
and your file system of preference. And I'm going to select XFAT due to the wide compatibility and the practically unrestricted file size limit. Tick Perform a quick format option, select OK, then continue past the warning message and click OK again. And in a few seconds, the drive is formatted and ready to use. In order to keep your cat well working and healthy, make sure you treat it well, like uh, don't expose it to excessive heat or cold, use the safely remove option, you know, run check disks from time to time. Some people would recommend formatting every month, however, I don't really think it makes good sense. But if you notice some performance degradation in time, possibly the first thing you might try is to reformat the drive. Now, this card was unreadable, we've just formatted it and it's now back to readable, but what if before the format there were precious files that we couldn't recover? I know what you're thinking. It's time to try and recover it and see how the program is going to cope with deleted files on this SD card. First, connect the drive to your computer. Then launch the app. Go through the initial wizard and select your SD card and then recover it. We'll start scanning the drive and this can take a few minutes depending on the drive size and that's the perfect time to make a cup of tea. Once it is finished scanning, locate the files you want to recover and hit the recover button. Just make sure to save them to another safe location. I hope that this episode has given you better clarity over the process of formatting on macOS and Windows and better understanding when and why this could be necessary. And also hopefully now you remember that you shouldn't lose hope in case some of the files here get missing because Recover It is always available for you in order to save some lost files. That's been everything about this episode and hopefully you find it useful. If that is so, then here, girl, it's a nice button where you can hit the subscribe and get notified about all our next episode. My name is Michael and I'm looking forward to see you soon.